So have you ever wondered why the Doom 2016 reboot sequel type thing was so successful and movies like Star Wars Rise of Skywalker have kind of floundered and flopped a little bit? Well, Hugo Martin and Marty Stratton, both of those guys, the creative director and executive producer for Doom and Id, well, they kind of went into this a little bit on a podcast on IGN. But before we get into that, we need to roll this intro. If you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're a returner, I really appreciate you checking out another video. We try to put out videos several times a week. We're cutting back a little bit just because of the way things have gone with our production schedule here. It's been getting pretty hectic. So if you are new or if you are a returner, please give a big old thumbs up to this video. It helps out the algorithm. Again, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Then you can get all the crazy updates of all the different news topics that we talk about here. Now, let's get into the rest of this video. So, Hugo Martin and Marty Stratton did talk about how Doom was able to punch through and make a huge splash and was able to please all the fans that may not have had any experience with Doom prior to this sequel or maybe were put off a little bit by Doom 3. Personally, I really like Doom 3. I like Doom 1 and I like Doom 2. I'm, I'm a Doom guy. I'm a Doom fan. I'm not the Doom guy. That is the guy who is going to save Earth from the hellspawn that is invading in Doom Eternal. That is going to be so much fun. I'm so excited for it. But I digress. Let's get back to the topic at hand here. So they were on a podcast on IGN and one of the questions came up as to what made Doom so successful as compared to why other franchises such as Star Wars, another very popular franchise hasn't uh, garnered the same critical acclaim as Doom did. They, they had a response to this, and, and their response was pretty interesting here. They said that what Doom was able to do, they were able to find out what made Doom so successful. Why people like Doom 1, why people like Doom 2, why people like Doom 64, Doom 3. They, they went back through all of that and went, all right, what do people like about these games and how can we incorporate that into Doom 2016 and then Doom Eternal? So what they did here is they, they took a 50,000 foot view and went, all right, what makes Doom Doom? What is, what, what do people love? Okay, one thing, the metal. We, we got to have the metal. New Wave tried to destroy the metal, but the metal lived on. Okay, so that's the first step right there. People like the constantly running at full speed and love the fact that you don't have to reload, that you could carry every single weapon and, and just have a great time with that. So they took all of those features, the arena shooter aspects, the great soundtrack, the fact that you are sprinting 100% all the time and have enough bullets to turn everything on Mars into a fine red mist. And they packed that in and put it into Doom 2016. They go on to say that if you're not cooking with those same basic ingredients, that the real fans will know the difference. And I think we can agree that Star Wars isn't exactly cooking with the same ingredients that it was back in the late 70s, early 80s, as it is now in the late teens and into the future here. So people are pretty divided on whether or not you liked Rise of Skywalker, where for the most part, everybody really liked Doom 2016. Forget the people who didn't like it because of gore. Those are the same people who would not like it regardless. They didn't like it when it came out in the early 90s, in the middle 2000s, and now again in 2016. They're, they're, if you don't like gore, you don't like Doom. Just, it's just that simple. Uh, they go on to elaborate and say that it, it's with anything that you can do this with. You can boil it down to the basic elements. Is it your favorite YouTube channel that puts out consistent videos? Is it your favorite line of cars? Is it your favorite movie franchise? Your favorite game franchise? They, the good ones, take whatever is special about it, take all the unique elements, all the things that people love, and just go, damn, that's perfect. I, I love this thing, whatever it is. I love my Corvette. I love my Doom. I love my original Star Wars. I love my Avengers. I think Avengers and that whole franchise right there, I think they kind of do it one of the best in the movie business where 
you know exactly what you're going to get, but it's different each time. You know you're going to get a high-quality superhero movie, and some are better than others. Let's not make any bones about that. Some are better than others, but overall, you know you're going to get this level of quality at minimum. You know it's going to have elements X, Y, and Z, and you're just going to love it. Star Wars, they're taking some creative risks, and I kind of applaud them for that, but at the same time, those risks come with pretty big backlash. Look at Rise of Skywalker. People either loved it or hated it, and they had very strong opinions both ways on this. So prior to making Doom 2016, the entire team over at id spent months and years trying to distill down and take a real hard look at what made those previous Doom games so great. And really, their hard work paid off. They really did boil down and got the Doom secret sauce to success. It's Doom secret sauce right here. We've got it. We've packaged it. We've bottled it. We've called it Doom 2016. I do take a little bit of issue with franchises that reboot and then just use the same name that it already did, like Doom, Modern Warfare, and just all the other ones that are out there. But I again, I digress. I'm bringing this back. This is why Doom has made some success here and other franchises haven't. What really needs to happen here is people need to go back. You want to make a great Sonic the Hedgehog game? You have to go back to Sonic 1 and 2 and 3, Sonic and Knuckles. Look at what they did. What made that game so successful? Sonic in a 3D universe just doesn't work as well. Uh, there have been some okay games, but look at the latest Sonic game. It is a side-scrolling 2D game. You need to kind of incorporate that if you want to make a good Sonic game. You need to take a 50,000 foot view of what makes Sonic good. It's a side scroller. You run fast. You've got rings. Those are some basics right there. He's got this look of attitude on him. He doesn't have this weird interspecies bestiality type relationship with a human. And I, that was weird. That was so weird. He doesn't turn into a werewolf or werehog or yeah, whatever. You just need to boil it down and just make it great. That's part of what makes Pokemon great. They know what makes Pokemon great. They keep doing it over and over again. And say what you will about that, but it works. It sells like gangbusters every time. So, with any luck, Doom has continued to recapture this magic and keep it going in Doom Eternal. We will find out here, March 20th, 2020, just over a month away. I am stoked. I can't wait. We get to play that, but going to have to wait a little bit longer. Just keep on holding out here. I, I, I can do it. I know I can hold out just a little bit longer. I can make it. But you know who can't make it? You guys, because this video is over. And I want to thank you all for sticking around, watching all the way to the end. If you like this video, give us a big old thumbs up. It really helps out the algorithm and helps other people find this video, as well as other videos on the channel. If you really, really, really like this video, you can always subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Then you are on top of our latest videos all the time. Always remember to take care of yourselves both mentally and physically. A little bit of self-care goes a long way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.